Okay. All right. Well, <clears throat> again, I'd like to welcome y'all to the, the class here at our location and all those who are going to hear this over on the YouTube. This is part of the, uh, the series on the foundational stones. The name of his teaching is Yahshua, or Jesus the Creator, and God. And we'll open up in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Uh, and this is, this is kind of like our, uh, our verse that we'll be working on throughout this series. And this, these are building blocks for those to go into maturity. And the seven sound foundation. And in Hebrews chapter 6, we're going to start in verse 1, because as we read earlier in the, uh, the teachings before, when, when the Hebrews should have been teachers, they had need one to be taught the first principles of the oracles of God, and had need of milk and not meat. The strong meat belongs to those who by use have trained their. Uh, Sisters discern what could be, and we, we talked about that last week. And so, beginning in verse 1 of Hebrews 6, go ahead and read the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Messiah, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward Elohim. Now, Go ahead and keep reading. Because all these are building blocks. See, this, 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 go ahead and read. Verse 2. Of the doctrine of baptism and of laying of hands, laying on of hands, and of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And Verse this three. will we do if Elohim permit. What will we do if Elohim permit, if God permit? We will go on to perfection, to maturity. But just like I explained earlier, you can't go to college without graduating from, from grammar school. So they were still in grammar school when they should have been teachers. So and go back to the verse 1. Verse 1, chapter 6 of the book of Hebrews. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Messiah, let us go on unto perfection. That perfection is maturity. Go ahead. Not laying again the foundation now, hold of it, Hold it right there. Because what I want to show you is this not laying again the foundation of repentance. This sounds like, don't go back to the foundation, but this not laying again, this laying again is in the, in the it comes from the Greek word katabule. K A T O. B O L E. And foundation comes from the word the medium, T A T M L I O S. Now, in other places, this word contabule is translated cast down or ruin. And we're going to show you that. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians four, verse nine. All right, read the book of Second Corinthians, chapter four, beginning at verse nine. Go ahead. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down. Now cast down. That's that word katabule, which is translated "land again." In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Let's give you another place to look at. Look at Revelation chapter 12. I'm just giving you a couple of places now, but I will explain it in detail in another teaching during this series. Hebrews 12. Or as we go throughout. 
Revelation. Revelation chapter 12. Verse 10. The book of Revelation. Chapter 12. Begin in verse 10. Go ahead. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our Elohim and the power of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our Elohim day and night. Yes, sir. There it is there and in verse 9. Look at verse 9 and read. Verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his anger was cast out with him. Or cast down. See, so we're going to read from Bulletin's Appendix 146, and I'm going to read this to you concerning uh, this word. Okay. The now Kabbalah occurs in Matthew 13, 35. Different scriptures I'm not going to read, but the ones we are concerned about is in Revelation 13, 8, 17, 8. And the, that's for the now, but the corresponding verb Kabbalah occurs in 2 Corinthians 4, 9, Hebrews 6, 1, and Revelation 12, 10. A comparison of all these passages, especially 2 Corinthians 4 9 and Revelation 12 10 will show that Katabulo and Katabule are not the proper term for founding and foundation, but the correct meaning is casting down or overthrow. Consistently, therefore, calls for the same translation in Hebrews 6 1, where instead of not laying again, the rendering should be not casting down. That is to say, the foundation already laid of repentance was not to be cast down or overthrown, what was to be but was to be left and progress made on unto perfection. You got it? It wasn't to be cast down. Right, it was to be set. Yeah. Because they were building a, on, on the old covenant foundation. Yes. Now, so then they hadn't came into the knowledge of Messiah because they, they had happened. They weren't teachers, they should have been teaching the Messiah, but they were still dealing with the blood of bulls and goats and the atonement through blood instead of the atonement through fire, the Messiah. That's why the first doctrine of Christ, they had not comprehended. Because while you're getting, you've got to get understanding. And this is really to your Hebrew brothers. And this is why I'm calling this out because, first of all, you are called as the priest of God. And so you need to know how to lay this foundation in your own life so that you can lay it in others. So, this is why I'm starting off with, with Jesus, Yahshua the Creator. Because we don't have an understanding of who he really was, so many of us. And so I had to learn these things, you have to learn these things, and you have to teach these things. But you got to get that strong foundation. But you have went on and been someplace for 15 and 20 years, but this foundation is, is, is going to be revealed or to you later than what you built on. You're going to say, wow, and it's going to crumble. Right? <laughs> I had a problem with my house, and, and we had to go under the, the floor and see the foundation. That we had to build up, and I looked in there, and the foundation revealed that it was nothing there holding it up. It was revealed to me. So this is how it's going to look when you get ready to meet your maker. You're going to find out that your foundation can't hold up before him. So, let's look at Acts chapter 17. So I had to, we had to go in there and, and start rebuilding the foundation. And this is what we got to do now. You got to go back in and shore up, tear down that old one, and build a new one that you can stand on. Acts 17, verse 16. Go ahead and read. The book of Acts, chapter 17, beginning at verse 16. Go ahead. Now while Paul waited for them in Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city 
holy given to idolatry. So when he, he looked at Athens, he saw the whole city holy given to idolatry. Go ahead. Verse 17. Therefore, the spirit he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, What will this babbler say? Other, some, he seemed to be a set of of strange gods, because he preached unto them Yahshua and the resurrection. Yeah, because he came and preached Jesus and the resurrection. And so he was preaching Jesus unto them. <coughs> and it sounded strange into their ears. I'm not going to go through all that today, but then in verse 22, he's preaching Jesus unto them. Go ahead and read. Verse 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars here and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. Yeah, go ahead. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. Whoa! He said, I declare this unknown God to you. Because Jesus Yeshua was God before he came in the flesh. And so he presented them to the people as God. The night of, they don't know it, and they were in the worship in other gods. Go ahead. Verse 24. Elohim that made the world and all things therein. And this is the God that made what? The world and all things therein. Yes, sir. Seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwell of not in temples made with him. Yes, sir. So this is what he was showing. And this is what he was teaching. He was, he was teaching them Jesus was the creator. But they don't know God who made all things and whom all men live and breathe in. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 3. And to most of us, he is the unknown God. We think he's just Jesus the Christ who started with Mary. He didn't start with Mary, he came through Mary. We think he was not born of a virgin. He took on the form of a servant. He, this was the plan with the Father in the beginning. But when he came in the flesh, he was God before he came in the flesh. First Timothy chapter 3. Verse 15. The book of 1 Timothy. Oh, verse 16. Only that one verse. 16. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16. And with that controversy, great is the mystery of God. Elohim was manifest in the flesh. Whoa! God was what? Manifest in the flesh. Yeah, because when he came, he was manifest in the flesh. See, because before he came in the flesh, he was God. That's why when he came in the flesh, he, he was made evident in the eyes of man, this invisible God, who can come in the flesh. He was made manifest. Go ahead. Justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles. But that's what Paul was doing. That was Gentiles he was preaching to. Yes. Go ahead. Believe on in the world, receive up into glory. The same God came in the flesh, because you can't, you know, spirit, you can't kill spirit. He took on the flesh. He was not a divine being when he was on earth. He was a man when he was on earth. That's why he could die. And then that's why he was believed on in the world. And that world is the cosmos, which is the created world, and received up into glory. Now, John chapter 1. Let's start in verse 1. John 1, verse 1. The book of the Gospel of John, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. Go ahead. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Elohim, and the Word was Elohim. So in the beginning 
was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. That's two. The Word that was God and the Word that was with God. Verse 2. The same in the the same was in the beginning with number one. The same that was in the beginning with God was the Word, which was God. Go ahead. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And the Word that was with God, all things were made by Him, the Word. And without Him, the Word that was with God, who was Jesus before He came, was not anything made that was made. Go ahead. Verse 4. In Him was life. And the light was the light of men. Uh huh. And the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Verse ten. Verse ten. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. So when he came in the flesh, he was in the world, wasn't he? Yes. And what was the world made by him? That makes him the creator. Yes. He was the creator. That the world was made by him. But the world knew him not. Go ahead. Verse 12. He came unto his verse 11. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. And his own was Israel. But they crucified him. How could they crucify God? They didn't crucify God. They crucified him when he came in the flesh. Verse 14. Verse 14. And the word was made flesh. The word that was with God. Who was God before he was made flesh? He was the creator. The Father and the Son was in the beginning. You don't see no three. You see two. They in the beginning, but we dealt with only the Son. We never dealt with the Father. You thought you were dealing with the Father because you thought he was the creator. But Messiah is the one. Before he came to me, the anointed one was the creator. Amen. Amen. Finish reading 14. And the world, and the world was made flesh and tabernacled among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That's right. See? So, he was full of grace and truth. Verse 15. Verse 15, John bear witness of him and cried, saying, This was of whom I spake. He that cometh out of me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Wait a minute, but when Jesus came, he was born six months after John. But John came, hey, he was before me. Because he was God before him, before he came in the flesh. So he declared, he declared the Father. So he told you in verse 18. Go ahead. Verse 18. No man has seen Elohim at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Right. And we're going to see that. Even though they saw God back in the old covenant, it wasn't the Father. They've never seen the Father at any time. But we're going to see that. We're going to get to that later. So when he came and created the world, that was. The world has created. It was in great order. It was a beautiful fashion order because he didn't make it, make it become uninhabited. It, it became uninhabited. But that's another teaching for another time also. But let's go to Genesis chapter 1. Look at this God here. First of all, verse 1. I'm going to start this. Book of Genesis, chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. Go ahead. In the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. Now, who is this? This was not sure before he this is the creator. Yes, it's not sure. And, and the reason God, this word God is Elohim. Because Elohim always deals with that creation, with what he created. 
That's why you see the first use of Elohim in the Hebrew deals with creation. You'll see Jehovah, when he's dealing with Israel and others, that's dealing with the covenant God, but his name was Jehovah there. When you see God Almighty, that's what supplies all your needs. That's El Shaddai. But this here is Elohim, the creator who deals with his creation. Go ahead. Verse 2. Go to verse 4 and read. Verse 4. And Elohim saw the light, that it was good. And Elohim divided the light from the dark. See, he's doing all this stuff. He, 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 he's creating and recreating. He's the only one that can create. Man can't create anything. When, when you create something, you start off with nothing. When you make something, you've got something already formed or made. You can come out of something that's already in existence. Verse 6. Verse 6. And Elohim said. And Elohim said, let them be further. Go down to verse uh, 8 and read. Verse 8. And Elohim called the firemen heaven. And the evening and the morning was the second day. We ain't gonna go through this whole process, but you get the picture. This, this, but you know, this was he, he who was creating everything and making everything. In the beginning, was nothing was made without him. Genesis chapter 1, verse 31 and read. The book, the book of Genesis chapter 1, beginning in verse. No, it's not verse 26, that's not. 26, same chapter. Yeah, verse 26. Read. And Elohim said, Let us make man in our image. That's, I mean, that's two. Because it's the Father and the Son talking. Let us make man in, 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 in my image or our image. Our image. That's more than one. It ain't three. We ain't only some of third person. And after our life, so he made man in verse 31. Verse 31. And Elohim saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning was the sixth day. This is Elohim. This is the God that made everything. This is the heaven of God that, that Paul preached, which was Jesus, before he came in the flesh. He is the creator of all things. Chapter 2, verse 7. Go ahead. The book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord Elohim formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living soul. Who created man? Your creator is your Messiah. And you're going to reject him? But you don't know who it was. You reject his commandments that he gave to man. Well, he changed them. No, he didn't. He said he's the Lord. He changed his not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You got to get this foundational thing in your mind because there's another Jesus being taught. That says you ain't got to keep his commandments. See? That he started with Mary. That Mary was his mother. That's a whole other Jesus. This God didn't have no mother. This God is the creator. Verse 9. Verse 9. And out of, of the ground made the Lord Elohim to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also. Now, this tree of life is in the midst of God. This is a spiritual tree. The first one was good for food. But now, this tree is spiritual. This is Jesus. The same one is called the bread of life. It's called the tree of life, the bread of life. Battle from heaven. Go ahead. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Like we talked last week, that was Satan. See, because anytime good and evil is mixed, it becomes corrupt. The tree of life had no corruption in it. Satan corrupted it by changing the word and adding the word. Then the word of God became corrupted. That's why you have to have your senses trained to discern both good and evil. Because good and evil looks good, but it's corrupt. And God ain't gonna deal with it. Now, Messiah the Creator, look at Colossians chapter 1. Colossians 1. So those are two spiritual beings back there. 
Don't think a strange thing that, 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 that God walks in the midst of the God. He can take on any form he wants to take on. Colossians 1, verse 13. We're going to start there. Talking about the Father and the Son. Go ahead. The book of Colossians, chapter 1, beginning in verse 13. Who have delivered us from the power of darkness? That's the authority of darkness. That's Satan. We've been rescued from that authority. But we got we can't give it back to him by not being able to serve those good people. We give it back to him. Just like he did before he bring death into the time. Now, go ahead. Who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of your dear son? Uh, you ain't there spiritually. You ain't there physically, but you're there spiritually in your mind. When you got that covenant, the laws in your mind. You ain't you, you, you become a citizen that follows those godly laws. That was from the beginning. Go ahead. Verse 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Now, who came and died for you, people? Messiah, Messiah, Yahshua, who also y'all call him Jesus, huh? and that's all right. I ain't gonna, they ain't gonna get you on it right now because I'm used to call him Jesus, and we don't want to turn you off by just hitting you over the head so hard that you don't even listen to the word. You can grow into that knowledge, but you should grow into that knowledge. But remember, we just laid a foundation here. Go ahead. Verse 15. We'll get to that point later on in this series. Go ahead. Verse 15. Who is the image of the invisible Elohim, the firstborn of every creature? Yes, sir. For by him were all things created. What? By who? Who was the firstborn? Who was the what? Who was the image of the first invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. By him. By him and son who came and died for you. Go ahead. Were well, all things what? Created. Because why? He's the creator. Yes. He brought into existence that from nothing, the, the, the heaven and the earth. He gave us the command. He came to Israel. He came to to Moses. He delivered us out of there. He came to Abraham. He is the one and only one to do it. That, that's why he said. You have no other God. You only got one God because you never have dealt with the Father. No man at any time has seen the Father. Who was that in the tree of the bit? They saw him in the garden, people. They saw him all the place. But go ahead and read. Verse 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be throne, thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. <laughs> Can you get any clearer? Clear? Go ahead and read. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Go ahead. And he is the head of the body. Wait a minute, now. Who's the head of the body? Christ. Your creator. Messiah. Yes, sir. He is the head of the body. Go ahead. The church. Who is, the be who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. Wait a minute. Man, you want to have preeminence among your, uh, among your among the church? Your God's spirit, your creator? You crazy little boy. <laughs> the thing formed, the clay that was formed, no sense of the power to the pot. This is how it ought to be. Why do you think we're going to get thrown in the lake of fire? I'm telling you, you know, pride. See, without understanding, it gets you killed. Quickly. It's coming. Hebrews 1. What verse we thought in the red? Chapter 18. Is Hebrews 1. And we put this. Laying out this thing as a series, as a, as a, as a foundational stone. That's going to be the name of this one. Laying the foundation. And you got to build upon stone upon stone. But that's how you want it to build because 
But when, when it says with this false and philosophy and vain deceit, the rudiments of this world, the rudiments of the world is brick by brick, but they have built into our lives, and we got to cast that down and start building this brick by brick and stone by stone. If we're going to be true followers of the Creator. Go ahead. Hebrews 1, verse 1. The book of Hebrews, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. Go ahead. Elohim, who in sundry times and in divers matters, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Uh huh. Had in these last days spoken unto us by his son. Yes, sir. Whom he have appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. Whoa! There it is again, man. His son made the world. Elohim is a plural form. That's why the Father can be called Elohim and the Son can be called Elohim. And that's why we're going to be called Elohim. Because it's the God family. When you become part of the God family, you'll be part of, you'll be called Elohim. When you become as he is. Part of that God family. That's why you, when you're born again, you become Elohim. You don't still be flesh. See, that's a teaching from the other Jesus. When you're born, what, what, what you get happen, happens to you, you can translate into his kingdom by renewing of your mind, and your mind becomes created in righteousness and true holiness. Your thoughts become his thoughts, and his way become your way. That's you're born of the water, you're born of the spirit in your mind that is created from his word. But you have not become Elohim yet. That's why that was born of the flesh and flesh, and that was born of the spirit and spirit. Understand that? Where we at? Go ahead. Who be in the, the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person? And upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majestic on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he had inherited, obtained a more excellent name. Than that. Right, because he had different names in the whole back in the beginning, but when he came, he came in the name of Jesus. That name came from heaven. He said, You're going to call that name Jesus, or you sure. Because he came to this father's name. The father's name was Joshua. He gave his son the same name. He came. But go down to verse uh, 8 and read. Verse 8. But unto the son he said, Thy throne, O Elohim, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy name. Did the father come? Elohim? Go ahead. Verse 9, thy is love righteousness and hate the iniquity. Therefore, Elohim, even thy Elohim. So they both got it. Same thing. Go ahead. Have anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellow. Uh huh. And thy Lord, in the beginning, has laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens of the works of thy hand. Talking about Jesus. Go ahead. They shall perish, but thou remainest. And they all shall wax old as the a garment. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. You see that? Let, we just let the word speak. He's got his own throne. He, he is God. You don't see three, you see two, don't you? Right. See, what he said. In verse 10, and in the beginning, thou hast what? Laid the foundation. Because in the beginning, he's the one that laid the foundation. That's why we're going all the way back to lay the foundation. Let's go to Ezekiel 13. You gotta get this foundation right. Starting 
verse 4. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 13, beginning at verse 4. Go ahead, O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert. Go to verse, uh, they like, they like foxes. Go to verse 6 and read. Verse 6, they have seen vanity and lying div divinations, saying, the Lord said, and the Lord has not sent them. Now that, that is Jehovah or Yahweh. See, that's another thing. Because that's the name for when the gentleman is coming to people. See? The one who had made them his God. And then, yeah, when, when, when Jehovah appeared on the, on the, on the, on the ship, when he brought him out of Edom, he said, he gave him a covenant. He said, I'll be your God, you'll be my people if you keep my covenant. See, that's the covenant God. Jehovah, but it's just, it's just a title. He got many hats. <coughs> we just call a God. This guy, guy got with many hats because he can do different things. You know, he can be a mechanic, but he's a mechanic. He might be out there selling uh, uh, popsicles one day, or he might be on the roof being a carpenter. Whatever hat he wearing that day, that's what he did that day. It represented what he was doing. But go ahead and read. And they have made others to hope that they will confirm the word. And that's what they go around. They go around speaking out of their mind. And, they, and they're hoping to confirm something from these false prophets. That's what they're doing today. Well, I got a word for you, brother. And they speak it to you. And, and you think you received something. And, or you think you had a dream. And you, and you go there to them. You hope that they confirm the nonsense you got in your head. And you got it from Satan. Because you want to do what you want to do anyway. Amen. <laughs> So you want to confirm. So, and this foundation is very shaky. Yes. Go ahead and read. Verse 7. Have you not seen a vain vision? And have you not spoken a lying div divination? Yes, yeah, a lying divination. What, what books don't come out of easily. I've you know, had somebody speak of all kinds of books all over And you got this and that's going to come out of your belly. <laughs> Crazy. No Bible, no word. The foundation is set on the word of God. That's right. Right. Go ahead. Where is he say? The Lord saith it. Albeit, I have not spoken. That's right. They said the Lord said, but he didn't speak nothing. Go ahead. Therefore, thus said the Lord Elohim, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies. Therefore, behold, I am against you, said the Lord Elohim. Yes, sir. Go ahead. And my hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and thy divine lies. They shall not be in the symbol of my people, neither shall they be written in, in the writings of the house of Israel. That means when he comes back to get his people, they're going to be cut off. Go ahead. Neither shall they enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord Elohim. That's right, that I am Jehovah, your Elohim. My name is Jehovah, and I'm your Elohim. I am your creator. Go ahead. Because even because they have seduced my people, saying, Peace, and there was no peace. Uh -huh. And one built up a wall, and lo, to, and lo, others daubed it with untempered more. And it's untempered. They, they were building on another foundation. They were, they were building on a false doctrine, lying divination, lying words, people vanity. Go ahead. Say unto them, was daubed it with untempered more, then it shall fall. There should be an overflowing shower, and ye, O great hailstone, shall fall. And a stormy wind shall rain. Uh huh. Lo, when the walls is fallen, shall they not be said unto you, Where is the daughter wherewith ye have died? Therefore, thus said the Lord, Elohim, I will even rend it with a stormy wind in my fury. Uh -huh. And there shall be an overflowing shower in my anger, and great hailstones in my fury to consume it. Because when he comes back, he's going to check out all these foul things. Go ahead and read. So will I break down the wall that ye have dogged with untempered water, and bring it down to the ground, so that the foundation thereof shall be disturbed. Yes, sir. Then you're going to see what you've been building your life on. Like I said, when, the, when, 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 the, when we took these floors out and looked at this foundation, and we discovered it, it wasn't holding up nothing. Now you've got, you got to build it back. Because there was somebody's house before we got it. And so we put it on another man's house. We trusted him what he did to him. <laughs> and he didn't did nothing. He let it crumble away and just covered it up. See, that's what they do with the word of God, see. Now, but when you got to give an answer, 
Go ahead and read. Because he's going to break it all down. And it's going to be discovered. Go ahead. And it shall fall. And ye shall be consumed in the midst of all. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Then we get consumed right along with the house. That's when I got out of organizational or Christianity. I said, I'm going to let the Lord build the house. And I don't know how to build it. Except the wisdom and knowledge of the Lord. You got to lay a foundation. You got to teach the people. Everybody don't want to be taught. They ran out of here. That's all right. Because they were building on another foundation. We got to see what is, what is written. All things are turned away from Paul. Not that I'm wrong. But I ain't going nowhere except with the Lord. The ministry that I've been called May not be fair about else, but I've been I've been taught, I've been given the spirit of wisdom, God, and revelation, God, to him to teach the few, to teach the rim. Now others have a part they've been given. That's my part. And this part may not be for you. But if you want to be a teacher, I've been, and you want to be a disciple of the true God, that is the spirit that God has put in me. So, and this brother here, and then those who hear. But I got to say to myself, and all of them that hear me. So, it ain't for everybody, it ain't to everybody, but it is for everybody. But everybody, the foundation is for everybody. So, those who want to know. But anyway, I just thought I would make that clear. That's been something I want to clear up. Where am I at? Go ahead. So when I break down the wall that ye have got with untempered water. You know you read that. Verse 15. Yes. Verse 15. Thus will I accomplish my wrath upon the wall, and upon them they have dogged it with untempered water. And will say unto you, the wall is no more, neither they that do. Yeah. Verse 22 and 23. Y'all need to read this whole chapter, but I ain't got for time's sake, I ain't gonna do it. Go ahead. Verse 22. Because with lies he have made the heart of the righteous say, whom I have not made say, and strengthened the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way. My promise, no, by promising him life. Yeah, yeah, you're born again. And the wicked, and they ain't taught the wicked nothing about the law. You're going to go to heaven, all hell can stop it. You ain't taught nothing about what they're going to repent to and turn back to. That's why this foundation ain't been set in the church. Oh, just covers you out. You ain't told him that they got to be clean up before this God. Oh, well, he was clean to his word, but you don't know his word. So you set the foundation. Because Jesus is in the beginning. Well, I don't want to hear that from him. about that Old Testament God. Well, what God do you want to hear about? That's the only one you ever dealt with. He's the same one that was in the beginning, the one who came in the flesh, the one who died, the one who sat back the right hand of the Father, and you said you don't want to deal with it. I don't want that Old Testament God. I want my God and my imagination. So you lay your own foundation. That's the way it is. Because I've been there and done that. Now, Philippians chapter 2. Now look at John 17. John 17. John 17. John 17. And we're going to go to verse. I'm going to read this chapter on your own one day. And I don't want to read through it all, but go to uh, verse 4 and 5. The Gospel of John. Go ahead. Chapter 17, beginning at verse 4. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Right, because we plan to do it that way. And, 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 and the Creator came forth. It's not creating mankind, but mankind fell into ruin. And so he had to come and die for his creation that he had created. Even man and even the whole earth. That's why there'll be a new heaven and new earth. He got to redeem the whole creation. And he did. Go ahead. Verse 5, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy 
own self with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Whoa! Well, what? Before when? The world was, man. We still ain't seen two. Two of God. Go ahead. Verse 6. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest. Wait a minute. What did he give it to him? What is it? Your name shall be called what? Jesus. Yes. What happened to birth? This is the Father's name. He didn't come in the name of Jehovah. He came in the name of Jesus. Y'all sure? That name was given to him. He inherited that name. We saw that back in, uh, in Hebrew. Go ahead. I have manifested that name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Right. Now, y'all didn't read that whole thing on your own, but for the second time. Verse 17. Verse 17. Sanctify them, them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Just set apart through thy truth. Sanctify them to be set apart for the Holy One, for to God. That's what holiness is. Verse 24. Verse 24. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Yeah. Before the foundation, before the because in the beginning he was there. See? Verse 26 And I have declared unto them thy name and we clear. What name you declare? Declare? Jesus. Yeah, sure. I mean, told him, is he asking my name? That's that was the name that was spread about to the whole world, man. It was the Father's name. Yeah. Go ahead. And I have declared unto them thy name, and we declare that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I am. Psalms 140, Psalms 119. Verse 142. I'll read your sin. Psalms 119, verse 142. Just start reading. Go ahead, read. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. He sanctified it how? Through that truth, right? What is truth, people? Hello. Thy word. Thy word is truth, and what? Thy law is truth. Because it's one and the same thing. Thy Torah is truth. Thy law is truth. The Torah teaches you his laws and his orders and his statutes. That truth doesn't change. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's why you are sure Jesus, the, the true Messiah, the other one, is the same yesterday and he was in the beginning, today, now, and for all eternity. He is Jehovah. He don't change. He changes not. I am the Lord. I change not. Only thing that changes, we change him, or we got changed to worship another Jesus. Another doctrine, another gospel. Philippians 2, verse 5. Philippians 2. The book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 5. Go ahead. Let this mind be in you. Which was also in Messiah Yahshua. Go ahead. Who being in the form of Elohim, thought it not robbery to be equal with Elohim. Right, we still don't see through that, but what was in the form of Elohim? Form of God. Where well, in the beginning, people? Yes. He was equal with the Father. Because they they that's the God family, that's the Godhead. Go ahead. Verse 7. But made himself of no reputation. And took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. But when he came, he was made in the likeness of men. And he took on the form of a servant. But before that, he was he was God. Go ahead. Verse 8. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He came from his high and mighty throne as the creator and humbled himself and became like man and died for us. And gave us commandments to keep. And we said we ain't going to keep it. He gave us a covenant to keep. And we keep breaking it. And then he wrote, well, why 
God don't throw us a lick of fire. No, man, he came down and died for us. That was the mercy of people. And then you reject it by not keeping his word? Then you don't want eternal life. That we get what we choose. He said, I said before you life and left, therefore choose life that you may live. It's our choice. Where we at? Verse 9. Go ahead. Wherefore God also have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Ain't no name above the Father. He was given that name. He inherited that name. Go ahead. And at that name of Yahshua, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Yes, sir. I Isaiah 45. We're going to start in verse 21 through 23. Isaiah 45, 21 through 23. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, beginning in verse 21. Verse 21 through 23. Go ahead. Tell ye and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together who have declared this from ancient time, who have told it from that time, and not I the Lord, and there is no Elohim else beside me. Am I not Jehovah? And there is no other Elohim beside thee. Go ahead. A just Elohim and a Savior, there is none beside me. There is none beside him. He is the Savior. He was the Elohim. He was the hope. See? Go ahead. Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am Elohim, and there is none else. Because you never killed with your father at all. Go ahead. I have sworn by myself. What did he swear by? Himself. Go ahead. The word is gone out of my mouth, and the right in righteousness, and shall not return. And unto every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Yeah, we just read that, didn't we? So who's about to come out of? The creator. Jesus is out. But the Father's words were already given. See, but he swore by himself because we never have dealt with him. Uh, 48 verse 12. Isaiah 48 verse 12. The book of Isaiah chapter 48 beginning in verse 12. Go ahead and read. Hearken unto me, O Jacob, in Israel. Jacob was the physical seed. Israel was the spiritual seed. Because he was going to be the father of many nations, but out of his line was going to come nations. Israel, Jacob was given that name by his, his earthly father. Israel was given his name from heaven, people. I was the father of that. They were talking about two seeds there. Go ahead. Hearken unto me, O Jacob, and Israel. My call, I am he. I am the first. I also am the last. He's the first and the last. Go ahead. My hand also hath laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand has spanned the heavens. When I called unto them, they stand up together, sir. Man. Woo! Wow, Power, eh? Look here. Revelation 22, verse 12 through 14. The book of Revelation, chapter 22, verses 12 through 14. All right. Go ahead and read. And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me. This is Messiah coming back the second time. To give every man according as he as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Ain't that what you just said back there? Mm -hmm. Just so. Said it back the promise. It said in Revelation. Keep on reading. That's verse 14. What read verse 14? Verse 14. Bless are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Wait a minute. Who's commanded? The Jesus. greatest commandment, people. Jesus is 
commandments. I know you have no right there in the city. When he comes down, and, he, and, he, and, he, and the Father's kingdom comes down, and he creates a new heaven and a new earth, where the blood of righteousness, you won't be there. I won't be there if we don't keep his commandments. He didn't say keep it just in your mind, you got to do it. Ain't nothing to say. Yeah. Revelation 1, verse 1. Go ahead. Book of Revelation, chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. The revelation of our Yahshua, Messiah which Elohim gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant Jonah. In verse 8, verse, eight. verse, eight. verse 7 to, to 9. Behold, oh, verse 7 and 8, go ahead. Verse 7 and 8. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, amen. So we know he got pierced, and every eye will see him when, when he comes back in the clouds the second time. Go ahead, look what he say. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, said the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. The Almighty. Ooh, he's the Elohim, the Almighty. He's the Elohim, the Almighty. Elohim is the creator, the Elohim, the Almighty. That's how he appeared unto Abraham, not as Jehovah. But then Abraham came out of covenant. He, when he gave it to Moses, Moses saw that he spoke in the name of I ain't explain it to you right now. He is the creator. I don't want to get off on another tangent because of time. I get off on the tangent. <laughs> Okay, so you're going to come to the clouds, right? Yeah. First Thessalonians chapter 3. I went to that ride. I didn't get that ride. I didn't get that ride. I didn't get that ride. First Thessalonians 3, 13. Book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 3, beginning at verse 13. Go ahead. To the end, you may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before Elohim, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord, Yahshua, Messiah, with all his saints. Yeah, because we're going to meet him in heaven, but we ain't going to go to heaven. He's going to be sent back to the earth, people. And it's coming to back where? That is going to heaven, and it's coming back to the earth. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14 through 17. The book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 14 through 17. Verse 4 through 14 through 17. Go ahead. For if we believe that Yahshua died and rose again, even so them also which speak in Yahshua will Elohim bring with him. For this we say unto you. He's going to bring him with us. That's right. For See, you met him. But he's going to bring you with him. Go ahead. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Well, if he's coming, he ain't going nowhere. He's coming. Because he's going to come with his sin, ain't he? Yes. Go ahead. Verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of Elohim. And the dead in just in the dead of Messiah shall rise first. Uh -huh. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's that spiritual sin. <laughs> when he comes back, they're gonna be in the air. The physical sin gonna get gathered together on the earth and get taken into the land. We're coming back to meet them in, and be at, at Jerusalem. Look at Zechariah 4. Those who make their first resurrection. But we'll get to that and lay the foundation. Because that's part of the teaching of the foundation. Zechariah 14. Right before Malachi. Last book of the Old Covenant. Old Testament. I like to call it. And we're going to start in verse 3 and read. The book of Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 14. Because this is where he's coming back. Go ahead. Get in verse 3. Read this me verse 14. Verse 4, I'm sorry. Verse 4. 
And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst of thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall be moved toward the north, and half of it toward the south. Go ahead. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountain, for the valley of the mountain shall reach unto us hill. Yea, ye shall flee, like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Uh huh. And the Lord my Elohim shall come, and all the saints with thee. Can we just read that in Thessalonians? Come where? He coming back to, to, to Jerusalem. Go ahead. Verse 6. And it shall come to pass. And then that controversy is going to get settled on whose land that is. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass in that day that light shall not be clear nor dark, but it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord. Not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that in evening time it shall be light. Because it's going to look like brightness coming out of the sky. And we're gonna be we're gonna be changed and we're gonna be bright like him. We make that first resurrection, and the whole sky and the whole earth gonna be lit up with his glory. Go ahead. Verse 8. And it shall be in that day that living water shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea, and half of them toward the hinder sea. And summer and in winter shall it be. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord, and his name one. Where are you gonna be at? On the earth, people. He be sitting back there for the saints. Go down to verse 16 and read. Verse 16. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nation which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts. Because he's the king of kings, the Lord of lords. Now, people, go ahead. And, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. Oh, no, they ain't going to keep his feast. You better start keeping them now if you want to keep them later. If you ain't keeping them now, you ain't going to keep them later, people. That part is commandments. The thing is free, free. Church, the so called church that Jesus can teach you, go ahead and teach you about these things. They say they've done away with it. That's the lie. Go ahead. Verse 17. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of no, people, that, that, that's no, we ain't gonna read all that. But they also say they're gonna burst the flames of fire. So we ain't gonna read all that right now. But we're gonna go to uh, John chapter five, the Gospel of John chapter five. So he's our creator, and those who make the first resurrection gonna meet him in the air, and come back for them. That's that's that's, and then the second. Death will have no power over those who make the first resurrection. But that second resurrection is where the lake of fire is going to come into the picture. That's why we're striving to make that first resurrection. Verse 37 of John, the Gospel of John. Go ahead and read. The Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse 37. And the Father himself, which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. Whoa! You've never seen his shape at any, at any time or heard his voice, right? Go ahead. Because we've only dealt with the Creator who was Jesus. We never heard the Father's voice. We've never seen his shape. We've seen, they've seen him in the old covenant. We've seen, they've seen him in Jerusalem. They've seen him, they've seen him, they've seen him. They ate with him. People, Abraham ate with him. The old Israel ain't with him. Go ahead and read. Verse 38. And ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he has sent, him ye believe not. See, because you don't believe this one here, you don't believe the old one. You don't believe the creator. That's what you reject. That's how. The Lord have mercy on my soul. The Lord have mercy on those Jesus. I used to teach him to do it. I didn't understand these things. Go ahead and read. Verse 39. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Ain't no new testament around people. The scriptures are from Genesis to Go down to verse 43 and read. Verse 43. I am come in my father's name. Whoa, there it is again. What day did he come in? His father's name. It was in the hand. It was given to him. 
He received it from heaven. He made it manifest, made his father's name manifest to the world. In father's name was Yahshua, which means God saved. Go down to verse 46 and read. Verse 46. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me. For he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his right, how shall ye believe my word? Moses wrote about the creation. Moses wrote Genesis. Moses wrote Exodus. Moses wrote Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. He wrote of the Lord. He wrote of the Creator. Exodus 24. He didn't write of the Father. The scriptures testify of, of the Creator, Yahshua. Exodus is Moses again. Verse 1 of the book of Old. The book of Exodus, chapter 24, beginning at verse 1. Go ahead and read. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord, thou and Aaron, and Nadab. And Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship here for all. And verse, Moses, verse, verse 3. Verse 3. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord, and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice, and said, All the words which the Lord had said, be good. Was Elohim, which was Jehovah, that Elohim, the Creator, had said. Go down to verse 7 and read. Verse 7. And he took the book of the covenant. And read in the, in the artisan of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has said, we will do. And be obedient. Uh huh. And Moses took the blood. But we will do it one. Be obedient. Nobody wants to hear that word of Jesus. They want to do what's going to right there. Go ahead and read. Verse 8. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which the Lord had made with you concerning all these words. Go ahead. And this is the same one who's the creator now. Go ahead. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seven of the elders of Israel. And they saw Elohim of Israel. Wait a minute, nobody saw the Father with him at any time. I feel when I heard his voice. Now he's coming and they see him. Go ahead. And he's going to talk to him. Go ahead and read. And they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were paid work of sapphire stone, and as it were the body of heaven in his sleep. Uh -huh. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw him away. He didn't put forth his hand in finish because you can't look upon this God and live. But he showed up in another way, in a different form. Because why? He said they saw God and they what? He, he laid not his hands. Go ahead. And did eat and drink. They saw God and did what? Eat and drink with the What's the Father. It was the Creator. It was Jehovah. It was God Almighty. But no man had seen the Father at any, at any time. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mountain and be there. And I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written. Whoa! Now, whoa, people. If you don't believe Moses, you don't believe his words. This creator, who was Jehovah, who came in the name of the Father, Jesus, who took on the form of flesh, he gave you the truth. He's the same yesterday and forever. Quit fooling around with him, false prophets. Hey, I was a false prophet. If it bothers you, it bothers me. But if it don't bother enough to repent, then so be it. Like I say, I'm talking to the few. First Corinthians 10. Verse 1. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 10, beginning in verse 1. Go ahead and read. Moreover, brother, I would not that ye should be here. How that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Go ahead. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Uh huh. And did eat the same spiritual meat. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Messiah. Who was it? Messiah. It was Messiah before he became a people. Go ahead. But with many of them, Elohim was not well pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. And so he overthrew them in the wilderness. Your same one who came to Messiah killed him in the wilderness. Go ahead. 
Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lust. Neither be ye idolaters and were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Uh -huh. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. He killed twenty three thousand back then. You think he ain't gonna kill us? See, y'all don't want to hear this. I don't want to hear that hell of five stone preaching. I don't want to hear about that old covenant of God. But we talk about the new covenant of God. Go ahead, read. Verse 9. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. There you go. Verse 11. Verse 11. Now all these things happen unto them for an example, and they are written for our admonition. Admonition is warning people. He warned us upon the upon whom the end of the world are come. Not the age. Verse twelve. Go ahead. Verse twelve. Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Yes, sir. Chapter three, verse verse nine and ten. First Corinthians chapter three, verse nine and ten. Book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. Let's read verse 10 and 11. Read verse 10 and 11. According to the grace of Elohim, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builder there are. But let every man take heed how he build it. Therefore, but take heed how he build on the foundation now. Go ahead. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Yahshua Messiah. You saw that, didn't you? But it's all the way back in the beginning. It's beginning with, 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 with his law and commandments. It's beginning with his feast day, with his statues, and his ordinances, and his covenant. And he came and died. He added that old covenant, that, uh, that, 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 that sacrificial law, and, and he came with a sin offering for man. Because man got run into God. He had to take that sin off man. But he gave that same covenant. Now I come by him. Understand these things. Luke chapter 6. One more verse after this. Cool. Luke 6. Okay. Luke 6. Verse 41. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, beginning in verse 41. Go ahead. The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but perceivest not the beam that is in thy own eye? Okay. Verse 46. Verse 46. And why call ye me the Lord, Lord, and do not the thing which I say? What did he start saying? He started saying it way back there in Genesis. We ain't doing nothing. He said, We ain't keeping the Bible. We're going to do a there. Oh, Lord, look. That's what he's going to say. Me going to come and say, If I, Lord, Lord, you can call of this mighty works in your name. I, I cast out miracles. I did miracles in your name. I fed the poor. He's going to say, He's part of me. You work with me, I know you not. Because the way he did nothing, he said. So why call him Lord? That's what Israel did. They said, all that you have said, we will be obedient to. And then some of the other Jesus said, hey, just come as you are. Did you go into heaven? He loves you no matter what. You ain't got to change. You just quit smoking. You go into heaven. He ain't nobody going to heaven. He told you he ain't going to make a sin to heaven. But he came down from heaven. Yes. We come back earth. They promise you life, and they tell you a lie. You ain't got life unless you keep the words of life. The, 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 the covenant has been ordained to life. Keep on reading. Verse 47. Whosoever come unto me, and hear my saying, and do with them, I will show you to whom he is like. Uh -huh. He is like a man which built a house, and dig deep, and laid down the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the steam, the stream, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. Who's that rock? That's Yahshua. Go ahead and read. 
read it. But he didn't hear it. But that was the creator. He was the rock, people. But if you don't hear the creator's words, you came as Messiah. It's like you built your house, your foundation. On, on sand or something else. Go ahead, verse 49. Verse 49. But he that hears and doeth not is like a man that is without a foundation built an house upon the earth against which the stream did beat the heavens, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Did we read that in Ezekiel 13? They dogged it with that, with that, with that mortar, with that bad doctrine, untipped mortar, mortar and, 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 and the foundation was discovered, and they were cut off. A warning. That's why we laid this foundation for you people. So you can take heed unto yourselves and unto the doctrine. Amen? Revelation 22. So you can have a right to enter into the gates of the city. Because no man has dealt with the Father at any time. Psalm 21. I got two minutes to get through this. 21. Verse 1. Revelation 21. Verse 1. Go ahead and read, brother. The book of Revelation, chapter 21, beginning at verse 1. Now, this is after the Messiah's kingdom that came on the seventh day. This is the eighth day. Messiah reigned for a thousand years on the earth, people. I ain't going to read that to you today. But if you want to read it, go back to chapter 20, verse 4 and 6. Now, go ahead and read. And I saw a new heaven and a new boat, earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from Elohim out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Lisa, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Go ahead. Now, this, I, this is the Father coming down. Go ahead. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Elohim is with men, and he would dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And Elohim himself shall be with them, and be their Elohim. Go ahead. And Elohim shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Verse 5 to 8, real quick. Go ahead. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faith. Uh huh. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega. This is just you, I'm Taylor Creator talking about. Go ahead. In the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain found of water life freely. He that will come and shall inherit all things, and I will be his Elohim, and he shall be my son. Uh -huh. But the fearful and unbelieving, and the abominable, and, mur and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. Chapter 22, I don't want to talk about that. Go ahead, verse 3 and 4. Go ahead. 22 verse 3 and 4. Read. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of Elohim and of the Lamb shall be in it. Go ahead. And his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their forehead. That's what they'll see the Father's face. Go down to verse 12 and through 14 and read. Go ahead. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to as his work shall be. Uh huh. And I am Alpha and Omega. Beginning in the end, the first and the last. Go ahead. Bless are they that do his commands, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the sea. That's our Lord, that's our God, that's our Messiah. Creator. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We got that on one side? Just about some seconds. Yes, sir. I was hoping Stephen heard it to read. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm pushing.